Welcome to Fusion 2021. Hosted by Queen's University's We Can Project. This is a capstone event celebrating our amazing female entrepreneurs completing the two month long Fusion Coaching Program. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hesp of Elizabeth Hesp Coaching and Consulting, your co host for the morning, along with Aileen Edwards of AIM Consulting. It has been my privilege to work with Aileen over the past few months as business coaches in the We Can Projects Fusion program with our 15 awesome participants. Today, you will hear from a number of those participants, and we look forward to their stories. Hello and welcome. As mentioned, I'm Aileen Edwards from AIM Consulting. I too am pleased to have partnered with Elizabeth to coach these awesome female entrepreneurs. <clears throat> Before we go any further, please note that we can project manager Carrie Ramsey has enabled live, live transcription for this Zoom call. She's mentioned that before. You can make the live transcription invisible by hitting the hide subtitles button at the bottom of your screen. And this event is also being recorded and will be uploaded to the weekend YouTube channel shortly <laughs> with professional closed captioning to be added in the days to come. Thank you, Aileen. Today we come together to hold an inclusive space and listen to the stories of our racially diverse female entrepreneurs from the Fusion Coaching Program. Storytelling is a powerful way to communicate and connect across cultures. It brings together the human voice and our emotions to share experiences, engage our attention and leave a lasting impression. In the past two months, each of our speakers have been working towards their business goals to pivot and scale their existing business or to launch a new enterprise during the pandemic. Today, we celebrate with them as they complete that journey and share with us the why, the what, and the how of their entrepreneurial stories. I'm excited to be here with you to celebrate our speakers' vision and business offerings to our, to our community. You're invited to stick around till the end for a chance to tell us about your business. And on to Aileen now. Our event is made possible by the Weekend Project, which is led by Queen's University and funded by FedDev Ontario through the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy Ecosystem Fund. The mission of the Weekend Project is to equip and empower existing and inspiring women entrepreneurs by providing them with resources, expert mentors, and networking opportunities to expand existing businesses and to launch new ventures. Its focus is to provide support to women entrepreneurs from diverse and underrepresented groups and sectors. Over to Elizabeth for the land acknowledgement. Thanks, Aileen. Before we begin Fusion 2021, I would like to take this moment to do a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the original caretakers of this land, the Mississauga of the Ojibwe's and the Haudenosaunee people who relocated here and other nations and settlers. For guiding me in this acknowledgement, I would like to thank my friend and traditional knowledge keeper, Georgina Riel of Riel Cultural Consulting, formerly based in Kingston, but now in Kitchener. And now passing the mic to my co-host, Aileen. So just a few words to introduce my co-host. Elizabeth Hess is a certified transition success coach and strategist for career and business transition. She is the owner of Elizabeth Hess Coaching and Consulting and is based in Kingston for the past 25 years. A member of the International Coach Federation, Elizabeth follows their code of conduct, a code of ethics and conduct in her coaching practice. Her results oriented coaching programs are for the purpose driven individuals and for both nonprofit and for-profit organizations looking to achieve strategic success with conscious leadership and cultural intelligence. 
As an immigrant who changed careers and is experienced in entrepreneurship, she understands well the challenges of change. Her pro bono success Kingston program provides coaching support to international students and to members of underrepresented, underrepresented communities new to Kingston. Elizabeth is a business mentor an advocate for the professional development of creative entrepreneurs and artists in Kingston and a board director at the Kingston Arts Council. She is a mom to two teenage daughters and committed to co-creating your change one solution focused conversation at a time. You'll find Elizabeth's link uh, to the website in the chat. Thank you, Aileen. And now I have the pleasure of introducing Aileen, my co-host for the morning. Aileen moved to the Quinty West area and resides in Frankfurt with her family. Aileen is the owner of AIM Consulting. She is a certified coach and a recognized human resources executive with over 25 years of experience, who can provide strategic professional advice in the management of your human resources. She is an ex exceptionally skilled communicator who effectively partners with leaders and has amazing capacity to assist you with developing an organization's HR plans. Aileen provides collaborative leadership and coaching to any individual or organization. She is a business coaching advantage, certified coach who can draw on a range of models and frameworks. As a coach, mentor, and facilitator, Aileen brings the skills to focus conversations that facilitate performance, change, and learning relevant to the leader in their personal, organizational, and business context. She is a mother of three adult children who loves coaching and developing others. You will find Aileen's website link in the chat. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, we begin by inviting award-winning poet, Abena Tufor Green of Tambourine Studios to deliver a spoken word performance to open our event today. Abena is one of your, our fusion clients and a spoken word artist, freelance writer, and a dancer from Belleville, Ontario. She is also the owner of Tambourine Studio, a storytelling studio that fosters creativity and wellness through words and movement. We are thrilled that Abena will be performing a work of commission poetry written especially for today's event. Abena uses spoken word to create, engage, and elevate. Her poems address cultural, social, and environmental issues, relationships, and reflects on everyday life as a small town raised, semi-nomadic, first generation Canadian. Her first book, The Way We Hold On, was published by Potter's Field Press in 2018. Please join me in welcoming Abena to Four Green to our virtual stage today. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Aileen. Um, Pleasure. And thank you, Carrie, Elizabeth, and Aileen for putting all this together and for having me. So this poem is called Elemental Women, and it is spelled not like the actual word elemental, but it's spelled L-M-N-T-E-L, -E okay? L is for leaders, M, makers, N, neighbors, T, transforming, E, enterprise, and L, life. So leaders, makers, and neighbors, transforming, enterprise, and life. We begin. Thank you, Abena, for uh, that beautiful poem. Be sure to stay till the end of our event to I experience- I think she's just our... starting. Oh, I was gonna say, <laughs> she went on mute and I wasn't quite sure. You're on mute, Abena. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, is she done? <laughs> I was like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> okay, let's do this again. That was the intro. This is the poem. You can hear, everyone can hear me? I'm still on? Okay, good. Let's do this again. Gathered around the island in the boardroom lab studio. You are, can't hear you. 
You're mute. Oh, you just went on mute again, um, Abena. Okay. Abena, I don't. I'm not sure why it's going on mute for you. Yeah, keep swooping in and out. I think I. I think it's because of what I'm using oh. here. Sometimes if you hit your space bar, it puts it on mute. It's because of the space bar because I need it for. Okay, that's okay because I was reading off the screen. All right, take three. <laughs> Let's do this You're again. Awesome. Oh, warm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gathered around the island in the boardroom lab studio, elemental women are putting luck into the pot, making a spread fit for generations who are all hungering for what they've got. L brings the master pans. M opens her kitchen. N has the recipes in her mind. And here comes T with the chai and conversation. Not much for baking, but boy, can she put a plan together complete with graphics so they can remember their steps. In the workroom, they get started. E brings a half cup of ideas to room temperature to soften. In a large bowl of warm water, L dissolves one teaspoon of granulated startup funds, sprinkles in grants, and lets stand until frothy. In a heavy bottomed budget, L heats the income on medium, stirs in a quarter cup of remaining expenses, bills, and bonuses until debts are melted and everything balances out. Elemental women are daughters of those who never measured and of others who did precisely, both in tune intricately with what's in the pan, with market demand. They are gathered today to build enterprise, to mix master plans from persistence and non-perishables, farmers market fresh ideas, greens that snap pay back into people's pockets. M needs the business name until smooth and springy. Transfers to a domain adds two cups of copywriting, stirs until smooth, and explains the importance of protecting intellectual property. T melts remaining insecurities, pours them into a folder to face later, sprinkles a half cup of assurance onto them that fears are unlikely to materialize. She sets them aside. On a highly secure e-commerce site, E rolls out the dough. She's always been good with bread. She spreads reserved funding over top of office staples, mixes in remaining software with services, sprinkles evenly over marketing materials. L teaches how to roll in registrations and pinch the seam to seal. Cut offerings crosswise, arrange them in prepared packaging, cover with prayer and let rise until doubled. This is how you capture your gift and wrap it into rolls, not to be held by all, but to be holden by many. Now, final steps. Bake until golden. Send out email promotions. Invert samples onto a platter. Let cool, stay cool. Serve in a way that reminds clients to savor each bite. Prep time, 40 to 100 hours. Total time, worth it. Number of people this recipe serves, countless. Wow, that was absolutely spectacular. And, you know, I'm really glad that someone caught me from cutting you off and not delivering that lovely poem because that was outstanding. So thank you so much for that beautiful poem. And as I was saying before, um, please make sure you stay till the end of the event to experience a real treat. Abena will be capping off today's virtual gathering with a second performance, this time a poem that she's written live during today's event which will capture the essence of today's business pitches. So you won't want to miss that. Over to Elizabeth. Thank you, Aileen. Um, I, I am speechless, Abena. I mean, um, it wasn't just only powerful and resonated, but, but the way that you brought it all together, the metaphors present there, I'm, I'm still absorbing. I'm, I'm savoring every word imprinted on my mind and my heart. So thank you so much. Uh, you captured the essence of what it is to be a woman, um, creating, making what we do in our kitchens, in our homes, what we do out in the community. Just beautiful. Thank you again. Right. Yep. Thanks for it all. Yep. 
So we will now begin a showcase of speakers. Yeah, right. Featuring Somebody, the amazing. Someone's not on mute. We'll just uh, pause. Yeah. Uh, to make sure. Sorry, I'm checking as quick as I can to let you know. But uh, go ahead, Elizabeth. If everyone else can check that they are on mute. Thanks. Thank you for that, Kerry. Uh, we will now begin our showcase of speakers featuring the amazing Women of the Fusion coaching program. Aileen and I will take turns to introduce each of our speakers. Our speakers' website and social media links will be put in the chat for you to take part in their call to action and support their businesses. We request you to spread the word by sharing their business profiles on your social media channels. There will be a Q&A time at the end of our event, and we hope to hear your questions for our speakers. We invite your engagement in the Zoom chat throughout today's event, and thank you for making time to be present with us at Fusion 2021. I know, yes, we hope you stick around till the end again, right? Because we want to hear about your businesses too. Thank you. Our first speaker, is Kairu Sato Miller, a tea sommelier whose comforting voice has been compared to a cup of warm tea. Kairu owns Chacha Tea on Days Road and has been selling both regular and luxury teas in Kingston for the past 14 years. Passing the mic to Kairu. Hi, um, I am very grateful to be here today. My name is Kaoru, spelled K-A-O-R-U, but sound Kao Lu, like Kao, Lu, Kao, Lu, Kao Lu. So you can practice later. Uh, take your time. My husband took five years. You are mute. Yeah. I am the owner of Chacha Tea, and I am originally from Japan, Osaka, Japan. I came here in 1994. First, I went to Toronto, and I really, really liked it. And I decided to stay here, but I didn't know how, but I found a way to become London immigrant. And life gets crazy, and I met my husband, and got married, first child, and moved to Kingston and second child. And I really like the city, beautiful waterfront, lovely downtown, lots of rooms, beautiful parks, but I had a problem. Tea shop. I needed a tea shop. So I decided to open my own. <laughs> so in 2006, I started Cha Cha Tea. Cha means tea in Japanese. Cha means tea in Chinese, and tea means tea. So basically, I, I sell tea. And when I look back, it, it's crazy. My daughters were really young, and oldest one was only two and a half years old. Youngest one just turned one, but lots of um, support from my um, family and friends. 40, over 14 years later, I still enjoy every single day being there and serve my customers. And now I am a certified tea sommelier from uh, Tea and Herbal Association of Canada. And I help people to find good quality of loose leaf tea and strongly suggest to make drinking tea a part of their healthy lifestyle. And today I wanna to show you how to make matcha. So matcha is powder green tea, really fine. Oh, oh moving. <laughs> and then just pour a little bit of hot water and whisk it. Make it frothy. Enjoy your tea. And I'm very excited to announce that I am reopening my store on Thursday, this Thursday. And I'm so extroverted, 
I miss my customers. So please come into my store to say hi, visit me. And if you're far away, please um, visit my website. I have an online store as well, www.tatiati.com. And I create a promo code, Fusion2021, for this group. Um, just uh, type in Fusion2021 for promo code for the um, checkout, and you get 15% off from today till March 14th. And now I'm really excited to start to offer workshops. I call it tea experience. I am not only teaching how to taste different tea, I can teach you how to slurp tea. I'm pretty good at it. And this fusion program, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Kerry, to accept me. Thank you, Elizabeth, for teaching me, coaching me last two months. It was fun because I am always by myself. I always meet myself, have meeting in my head with myself. So I am uh, really happy to be here and I cannot wait to, to meet these beautiful women in person one day. And at last, um, I wanted to share one of my favorite quotes by Eleanor Roosevelt about tea and a woman. She said, a woman is like a tea bag. You never know how strong she is until she gets in hot water. Thank you. Arigato. Thank you, Kairu. That was beautiful. And um, we will surely check out your website and take advantage of that Fusion 2021 promo code. And um, yes, please visit Kairu's website. She has uh, all her tea products uh, listed in an e-commerce uh, online uh, offering. And um, if you have any questions about tea, she's the one to go to. She's a tea sommelier. <laughs> Thank you, Kairu. Thank you, Karu. That was beautiful. Now I'd like to introduce Lorena Herrera Poyer from uh, E and E Collections. Uh, Lorena has a beautiful story for you, and uh, we talk about. She's going to talk about her um, her program and her website, which is a, still a work in progress. But E and E Collections will bring some amazing Mexican artisanal products to us in this region. So welcome to Lorena. Good morning, ladies. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Aileen, for my introduction. Uh, my name is Lorena Herrera. I'm so happy to be participating with you right now and sharing my story. I'm gonna uh, share with you some pictures. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, I'm talking about my story. If you can uh, uh, click on the link, I'll just send you in the chat right now. So, um, well, I was born in Mexico. City and I grew up in a beautiful city called Cuernavaca. Uh, everybody called Cuernavaca as the eternal spring for the beautiful weather the whole year. So it's really beautiful. Um, I grew up in a in a Christian family and I went to a, in a Catholic high school uh, where I was participating in missions. Uh, it was a group of people or group group of students that were visiting like really poor poor communities. Uh, we were bring, bringing them goods, uh, preaching them, and leaving these people a uh, lifestyle for a week. Uh, uh, this experience, I think, it really changed uh, uh, my view of, of my of my life. I really understood uh, that people and everybody has different opportunities in their life, and and I really just love the beautifulness and the simple simplicity of these people in these really pure communities. So well, uh, I, after I studied hotel administration and I worked for the hospitality industry for over 20 years in different uh, hotels in Mexico and luxury resorts in the Riviera Maya. Uh, I was able to work uh, in different states of the country so I love and I learned the importance of offering the, the excellent service in any type of industry. So uh, while well, my jobs in Mexico allowed me to travel to different states and learn from different cultures, uh, uh, 
learn about the gastronomy, even in, in, in the same Mexico, we have a lot of different gastronomy everywhere. We have different arts, we have different traditions. Uh, listening to the different dialects that we have, I don't know if you know that we have 68 indi indi indigenous la uh, languages in Mexico. Uh, well, uh, I love my Mexico, I really miss it a lot. So, well, uh, in 2014, uh, one of my dreams uh, became true. Uh, while I was visiting Cuba, I met my love, my French Canadian husband, and it's the reason why I moved to Canada in 2015. So I left behind my family, my friends, my, my job, my food, my country, my warm weather, especially. <laughs> It, it was a good, it's a, it was a really big change for me. But uh, my, my number one dream was to start a, a family. So, so that's why I moved to Canada. Uh, well, in 2018, uh, not everybody is, uh, not, not everything is wonderful in life. So after having two beautiful and healthy boys uh, and unexpected and advanced cancer diagnosis shock our lives, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. So I, I needed immediate treatment uh, to survive. And this is the reason why we moved to Kingston to be closer to the cancer center. So being unable to go back to work to, uh, as a customer service in Scotia Bank, uh, uh, I was having ongoing treatments and, and my symptoms were not allowing me to go back uh, to work. So I started thinking uh, how I could help my, my family economy and I decided to, to start my business, e, &E Collection. e, &E, Col e, e the name is because of my kids' names. Uh, their names is Esteban and Emiliano. So I started selling customized face masks, face masks, sorry, uh, from a group of women in, in women in Mexico. And it went really well. I sold around 2,000 of masks in, in two months. So this really encouraged me to continue my business. So uh, I opened the business and looking to find an accounting course for my small business. I've got so lucky to find this awesome opportunity program uh, for women, the weekend project. So honestly, before I started the program, I was with so many ideas of how to make my business grow. So one of uh, the biggest pieces on, on my puzzle was uh, my coaching program. Uh, we can connect me with AIM Consulting. Aileen has been a big and extraordinary support for me and for my business. I was, I was really feeling kind of lost uh, uh, when I started meeting a Aileen. And I, I, I thought that opening a Mexican restaurant uh, will be my passion, but after some coaching, some research, and, and everything I've been learning in this program allowed me to focus on more in my passions. So right now, uh, uh, let me share you, uh, of course, I decided not to open a Mexican restaurant and I'm very excited working with my business plan, which is a key tool for, for the business success. I'm taking a six week e-commerce course. I'm learning about social media, taking culinary classes and working on my website, uh, uh, which is really helpful. So uh, it's where I e, and e collection, it's, is going to grow now. It's a family business looking to support people, particularly women in developing countries in Mexico by selling their artisanal and, and handmade products. This art includes jewelry, witch hall art, beautiful pottery, textiles, eco-friendly items, alebrijes, and a lot more. Another of my idea is, is to sell uh, uh, the decoration of a Mexican temps, temps party which is beautiful, really colorful, and I love that idea. So I plan to visit this artisan in Mexico to sell their products here in Canada. And I would like to donate some profit to, to Cancer Association. Sorry. Sorry, um, a lot of Cancer Association helped me to survive. And I'm really grateful for that. That's why I want to share part of my profit with them. Uh, I highly recommend this adventure where on top of learning lots, you will have fun, you will socialize, and uh, the most important thing, you will learn 
that your own story is your business, is your success. I'm sorry. And that's it. Lorena, you did great. Um, and it was my absolute pleasure working with you. And um, I've actually got one of the products. I'm a cyclist and um, there's a there's a nice mask here. It's got a cycle uh, bicycle on there. So uh, great products, great. And I really enjoyed working with you. So, and thank you for sharing your story. It was a beautiful story and um, wishing you all the best with E&E &E collections. So I'm sure her information is in the, is in the chat. Thank you, thank Lorena. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> Over to you, Elizabeth. You're muted, Elizabeth. Thanks for that, Aileen. Thank you, Lorena. Your story was not only inspiring, um, um, and, and I was just riveted to the screen listening to you, uh, but uh, sharing your emotion in this group made it all the more real. And, and um, it, 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 was, it was just beautiful. I wanna know more about your business and uh, I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna check out um, the link and I would love to get my hands on one of those masks. <laughs> um, next up is Namusa Mangoma. She's the owner of Dansani Dance Company in Kingston. A physiotherapist by profession and a researcher in gender equality in Sub-Saharan Africa, she brings the power of Ubuntu from a home country of South Africa to create an experience for her clients with the rhythm and engagement of dance. Nemusa, the virtual floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. It's a great pleasure to be here and many, many thanks to the Fusion Program. Uh, as uh, introduced, my name is Namusa Ngoma and I'm the founder and artistic director of Dansani. At Dansani, we offer Latin and ballroom dance lessons. Uh, and in many, many styles, and I'll, I'll go more, I'll talk more about the specific styles that we cover at Dansani later on. Uh, dance has always been a very important part of life for me. So when I first moved to Kingston, I was at the very height of my competitive ballroom dance career. So when I got to Kingston, I was really looking forward to finding a ballroom dance community and continuing my dance. Um, but what was unfortunate and really a little bit sad for me at the time was that there weren't that many opportunities for one to do ballroom thing. Uh, especially for people who didn't have a dance partner. Even for classes, you really couldn't take a ballroom dance class or a Latin dance class if you didn't have a dance partner. So it was then that I realized that there was a really a big gap in the community uh, and it was time to create a different model of dance class where people could just, anyone could feel welcome uh, to come and participate whether they had a dance partner or not. Uh, so that's when I set out to create such a space. Um, so at Dansani, there is no partner required. Uh, everyone is welcome to take, come and take lessons. I mean, if you have a partner, if you have a dance partner, of course you're welcome to bring them, but it's not a requirement. There is no prior dance experience required either. Uh, so at Dansani, we just meet you wherever you are. Uh, and everyone is welcome and we take great joy at accompanying you as you discover new dance movements and dance rhythms. Uh, at Dansani, you'll also have the added benefit of actually training with a certified movement specialist. And as Elizabeth had mentioned, I'm a physiotherapist by training. And so when you come to class, I will also analyze your movement to make sure that you can get the maximum benefit from your dance lessons. Um, so 
Uh, again, Elizabeth did allude to the fact that I'm uh, from South Africa. And in South Africa, we've got this life philosophy called Ubuntu. So Ubuntu means I am because you are. And it really speaks to the idea of our common humanity, our oneness. And this alludes to the idea, the sense of community. Every, every each one of us exists in community with others. And so at Tanzania, we embody this idea of Ubuntu. And I don't know if you can see this, but Ubuntu, the universal symbol of Ubuntu is a circle. And so Ubuntu has inspired our logo at Tanzani. So what do we offer at Tanzani? Well, we have many styles of dance uh, in each of the genres, of the dance genres. So in ballroom, uh, we teach a number of different kinds of walls, such as the slow walls and the Viennese walls. In the Latin dances, we offer salsa, bachata, merengue. We've got cha-cha-cha. Uh, not the tea, Cairo, but close enough. Um, we've got jive and swing as well. Uh, so please do check us out on uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. We are at Dansani Dance Call, and uh, I'm sure the link will be in the chat box. Uh, I really want to give a big shout out here for the Fusion program. It has been absolutely amazing. It's been such a wonderful experience. Uh, for me personally, I mean, other than the joy and pleasure of working with Elizabeth, uh, just the process has also helped me uh, better articulate how my values uh, have informed and shaped my business. And that has really allowed me to understand more fully how my values uh, have influenced my client experience. So it has really been a wonderful, wonderful experience uh, to participate in this program. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. We have uh, a limited time promotional offer right now. So if you private message me on social media, uh, you can then take advantage of a free, uh, a free dance class. Um, it will be a virtual class for now because we haven't opened uh, up our in-person classes just yet. Uh, we will soon, uh, but for now, please uh, send me a message and you can take advantage of our free class. Uh, and you can check out uh, different styles uh, as you wish. So please do like us and follow us on social media. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That was wonderful. Now, moving right along, I would like to in oh, and welcome ourselves just in time. And I just need somebody to make sure that they're on mute. There's a I'm lot of background noise. <laughs> I got it. Okay, done. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's great. Because I wouldn't want you to miss what's coming up next. <laughs> what I'd like to do is I would like to introduce you to Darcel Runciman. And Darcel it runs Infinity Life Travel. Uh, or sorry, Infinity Life Weddings which she founded in 2014, because she's always had a passion and a vision for creating unique and memorable experiences for all. So she took that passion and vision and dedicated it into creating Infinity Life Weddings and Travel. And since the beginning of her Infinity Life um, has provided efficient, personalized, non-denominational, spiritual and interfaith wedding ceremonies. She serves in Belleville, Quinty West, Prince Edward County, Northumberland, Napanee, Kingston, Toronto, and other areas. Uh, now, I don't want to take up too much. I'll let Darcel take the reins and tell you a little bit more about her and Infinity Life Weddings. Welcome, Darcel. 
Oh, thank you very much, Aileen. I'm uh, sorry I was a little bit late. I was in another meeting for under weekend, so that's been great. Um, I um, so I'm not really sure what everybody else has said, and I do apologize for that. But uh, but I do want to uh, you know welcome everybody, and and I'm very glad and honored to be here today to talk to you. So my company, as Aileen said, is Infinity Life Weddings and also Infinity Life Travel. So they are two companies. The, the parent company is Infinity Life Travel. And uh, in, back in 2004, I decided um, that uh, because I was you know, exploring my own spirituality for many years prior, um, that I wanted to become an ordained minister. And so I worked and got my degree in that and uh, um, moving along and became an officiant and then in the last few years, I've decided that I wanted to do weddings as well. So in terms of planning weddings. And so what I've done is I created what I would like to call it as a one-stop shop for uh, officiating and then as a wedding planner and a travel advisor. So I can assist people with uh, destination weddings uh, and local weddings. And I, so I can do one or all three things for people. So. Um, the reason why I got into it is because I really enjoy being with people in sort of their intimate moments. Um, as an officiant, I'm also, uh, I do celebrations of life. And I find that um, that's something that I do. It, it's uh, almost an honor for me to be able to do that for families. Um, there's, I don't think there's very many people out there. And I know a couple of people, and I'm not sure if they're on the group here today, um, that are very good at grief counseling. And I, I think that there's, uh, it's an important thing that a lot of people can't do for others. And I, you know, I, I feel that I've been blessed to be able to do that and to be there for people in their time of need. So I love that I can on one side be that for a family. Um, and then on the other side, also uh, be somebody who's there at their happiest time when they're getting married. And I've had uh, been blessed in my life to be able to do that with uh, one individual couple where I was able to do that for, um, to do both of those services. Um, unfortunately, they, they got married. And then unfortunately, a few weeks later, um, he passed away. And because I was, um, I'm very empathic as well. And so because I, I knew that something was wrong with the individual, I sort of said, you know, if you ever need to bump up the wedding or, and such, you know, we can do that, no problem. And then they went in and told me their story. And so as an officiant and a minister, um, which not everybody is a minister if they're an officiant, I was able to, you know, to be there to sit with them and, and sort of go through that whole process. And then because of that, they also asked me to, to do the funeral when it came time. And so I was very honored to be able to do that. It was very difficult, as you can imagine, being there for, you know, somebody that you, you know, had met and were part of their family and, you know, in celebration and then to be there. Um, but I do, like I said, do feel that it's, it's an honor to do that. So um, I have gotten so much from this program and from We Can that um, I, I'm, before I was a minister, I was a business coach. And so I was on the role of like with Carrie and Aileen and, you know, and coaching businesses and helping them. And I loved it. I love helping people. Um, but this was an opportunity for me to actually ask for help. And I don't know about many of you women out there. Um, I know some of you that I, I can see your faces that I do know. And I think that we um, all tend to uh, not ask for help. Um, you know, we're the doers, we're the people that get out there and we're the entrepreneurs and, and we take charge. And I think there's a lot of times where we forget to ask for help. So I, I do feel that uh, the We Can program has been great for me personally, uh, in terms of being able to ask for the help I need to be able to offer support as well. Um, I know when we've had lots of group sessions, I do my best to try and, you know, offer, you know, what I can, my two cents to help people along the way and uh, in terms of networking and, and that sort of thing as well. So um, personally, I'd just love to, to say that Aileen's coaching has been wonderful. I've got a lot of value out of it. Um, for me, it was about focus. And because I have two different businesses, 
it was about how do I focus and, and make sure that I'm doing the right things to kind of move my business forward and expand. Because even though I had started in 2014, it's just been in the last couple of years that I've taken on the extra things and uh, probably took on more than I thought I was going to take on. But here we are, right? <laughs> you know, I became a travel agent and then we ended up, uh, you know, having a pandemic. So, so it's been interesting, but I've taken this time to do lots of learning and uh, educating myself and, and making sure that I keep myself motivated and know that this is going to change. So when it does change, that we have to be ready with our businesses. And so this time has been great in terms of kind of putting the steps in, in place for, for getting my business ready for what's to come. Um, because of course, with weddings as well, they've all either been postponed or delayed or, you know, change dates, that sort of thing too. So I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, their businesses may have struggled during this time, or, you know, you've been taking this opportunity to learn. And I think that's great. And I think just keep doing it. You know, if you have a dream and that's your vision, um, just keep at it and and don't let that vision go and and use the the people in in this group and this these opportunities that were given to to benefit your business and to to be able to share with other people because I think that's basically the learning for 2020 and 2021 is is that uh, we're all in this together we are you know even though we're in um, uh, the same situation we're in different kind of boats as they say right but we we all want to uh to be able to help each other and to learn that this is an opportunity for all of us to grow as a as businesses as women um as community and as as um you know people in general right we're we're there to help each other and i think that this um that this uh the fusion program you know, the coaching has been an opportunity for, for me at least to, to be able to expand and, and meet a lot of women who are truly inspirational. And I hope that, you know, I can be that for people as well. So I'll shut up now. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing our Darcel and thanks uh, for the shout out. I appreciate that. That was great. Uh, it was a great journey and I totally enjoyed working with you. And I love when you shared in the group session because a lot of the other folks learned a lot and have, have moved forward with that. So thank you so much for sharing. Now, I would like to introduce you to Lori uh, Hannah from Lakeside Dog Biscuits. So formerly uh, Lori's Natural Dog Treat She's located in Kingston, and it's Kingston's first natural dog treat bakery. Um, she has helped a lot of dogs with wellness. She's got a wellness line to help dogs with pain, anxiety, car sickness, allergies, seizures, uh, di and, and digestive issues. All those types of interesting things that help dogs be well. I'm excited. I was excited to work with, um, with Lori, and I will give her the virtual floor now so she can continue and talk a little bit about Lakeside Dog Biscuits. Welcome, Lori. Thank you, Aileen, and thank you for the introduction. Um, it has been a pleasure to work with you. Um, I've quite enjoyed our entertaining moments, and, uh, and I appreciate your insight into a lot of the things that I could not see. So as she said, my name is Lori, and I own Lakeside Dog Biscuits. Um, this is a business that has been in growth mode, I would say, for close to 20 years now. Next year, it'll be 20 years since I started making dog biscuits. Um, way back then, I had a dog that had been diagnosed with uh, cancer. And so when the vet you know, spoke to us about why those things happen, she explained that there are um, or were, they've made some changes since then, but um, there were many ingredients in commercial dog food and treats that were known carcinogens that damaged their immune system, that caused cancer, all kinds of other health issues. And so uh, from there, I started doing research on what was actually in the commercial dog foods and treats. I was thoroughly disgusted um, and at that point kind of switched my research to learning what was good for dogs, what 
you know, what their bodies needed to be um, healthy and happy and live longer lives. And then with, <laughs> with a recipe, and yes, I'm a bit of a pack rat here. So I had uh, magazines from the Harrowsmith magazine company and uh, one issue from 1986 had a recipe for dog treats that was uh, beef bouillon, garlic powder, an egg and flour and water. And so I took that recipe and I adapted it to using natural local ingredients and uh, started making that as well as homemade food for our dogs at the time. Um, and then friends and family wanted them and they were sharing them with other people. And next thing I knew, I was at uh, the farmer's market in Verona every Saturday with my two-year-old in tow, selling these uh, dog treats out of brown paper bags. And that was in 2003 that I first started doing the farmer's markets. And since then, uh, my recipes have evolved and improved. Um, and we now use upcycled um, spent grains from, right now we're using the spent grains from Skeleton Park Brewery. Um, and they also carry my dog treats in their tap room. Um, and so that is one of the dry ingredients. We also use all local meats and vegetables and fruits. Um, and that is basically the, you know, the ground rules of, of how we got started and, and what we do. Um, we do have regular dog treats and we also carry supplements that um, are made with hemp sativa extract that do help with um, many health issues for dogs. And um, I have been doing that line for almost three years now and have had nothing but success with all of my customers that have tried them. Um, so I, uh, I came to the weekend program because I struggled with um, not really getting the help that I was looking for with other business support programs in the area. And um, so I met Carrie and started working with her and I am a Métis woman. So uh, she suggested the fusion program. Um, and so we got started there. So the combination of the WeCan program itself has provided me with access to information that I couldn't find elsewhere um, information about funding, grants, loans, um, some of which I have actually received. And I'm very excited about that because it's allowed me to buy some much needed equipment that I didn't have. Yeah, very exciting. Um, and the fusion program, the coaching program, um, first of all, the, I would like to talk a little bit about the group coaching because that has really been um, challenging and interesting because we all as entrepreneurial women, like Darcel said, we're out here on our own and we do our own thing and we're you know, used to taking care of everything on our own. And that program has given us a networking um, framework and we all work together and, helped one another throughout um, the four weeks or whatever it was. And I found that to be very encouraging and really enjoyed it. Um, my coaching with um, Aileen, um, she has provided me with a much more laser focused uh, vision of what I want my business to be. Um, she has given me amazing feedback on ideas that I have brought forth and, and, you know, ideas of me wandering off my path and, and, you know, her really going, well, is that really what you want to do? And, and, you know, and then having that conversation about where that's going and, and getting me back on track and keeping me focused on my goals and, and being that obje objective person who is easy to talk to about my business and 
is able to give me that feedback and direction that I needed, even though I didn't know I needed it. So um, I really appreciate her help. Um, and I appreciate Carrie and the program. And thank goodness for FedDev Ontario for, for the funding to allow us to do all of this. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, Lori, so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. And thanks for the shout again. Um, Thank you, Aileen. Uh, Lori, it was wonderful to hear you. Um, I mean, all the stuff you put into the biscuits uh, for dogs, I mean, they just sound uh, yummy, but also healthy. I don't have a dog, but anytime I do, I'm going to come to you. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we go on to um, our next speaker who will enthrall you and your child with her storytelling skills and magical voice. Michelle McDonald is the owner of Ruthie's Reading Room, an inclusive online YouTube channel for young readers to expand their imagination and education. Michelle, please take the virtual floor. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle. I'm the creator of Ruthie's Reading Room. Ruthie's Reading Room is a children's storytime channel on YouTube, where I read children's books to kids in a fun and interactive way. My hope is to encourage a love of books and reading in children. Now you may ask, where did this all start? I started Ruthie's Reading Room about two years ago, come May. The idea originally came to me when I was on mat leave with my daughter, Maya, in 2017. We attended our local library's story time almost every Wednesday morning, and the facilitator, Amy, was awesome. Add to that my over 10 years of experience in, as a child protection worker, where I have a particular insight into children's experiences. Now I go into homes and meet with children and talk to them and get to know about that they may have parents who may be absent or parents who may be illiterate themselves, or they have parents who don't have the time, energy or resources to invest in their children's education or to support their literacy skills in, in particular. So I wondered, how would I be able to bring together the excitement and experience of story time for these children. Enter YouTube, a largely accessible medium for many kids. And I remember watching my own son scroll through video after video after video, clicking and watching whatever caught his interest. So I thought again, could I put together something that was educational and entertaining for kids that also highlighted the importance of representation. So Ruthie's Reading Room was born out of my experience as a mother, as a professional, and as a community member. I wanted to offer parents and caregivers a safe option for screen time. You can also catch me on Amherst Island Radio every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. where you can hear the audio version of Ruthie's Reading Room. So my vision, which has become much more focused since participating in the Fusion coaching program, has allowed me to come to uh, three, uh, three parts to my vision. Number one, work with school boards. So my plan is to put together video packages for elementary age students, which will allow them to watch something fun and educational while their teacher may, may need to take a break are there during their lunch, lunch hour. Number two, collaborating with authors and publishers to market their work. So I'll continue to read children's books on my channel, which will increase the visibility of books and ideally increase sales as well. And three, partner and collaborate with community agencies and organizations to ensure that there are, there's black representation in their program offerings. For example, in child protection, if there's a black child in a foster home, I would consult and recommend 
Black authored books and books with Black characters to ensure that child is, remains connected to their own culture. So you may be wondering, how can I help? How can I get involved? And I really appreciate your support and it's free. You can subscribe to Ruthie's Reading Room on YouTube. Feel free to share my channel within your social circle, circles. Like my videos on YouTube. And engage with me on my social media platforms. Like and comment on my videos on YouTube and engage with me and comment on my posts on Instagram and Facebook. And of course, watch with your little readers. Don't forget to tune in every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. to Amherst Island Radio. Thank you for your time. And remember, the best place to read is wherever you are with a book. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I can vouch for Michelle's storytelling talent on YouTube. I checked in and checked it out. And I sat there and I watched all her episodes. And my 17-year-old daughter came in. She stopped too behind me. And she watched standing behind me. And she said, Mom, she's got a great voice. It reminds me when you would read to me, which was a long time ago. So check her out. She's awesome. And her content is awesome. You like it too. <laughs> and on to Ailey now. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I just want to introduce you to Lucy Asamata and uh, Shanice Scott from Munchie Guru. They are a small local pot patty shop in Kingston selling Jamaican patties, but they also provide uh, food that's related to services um, that uh, are private, like chef catering and meal plans. If you've had an opportunity to take a look at some of the videos that they've shown about cooking on their Instagram site, you'll really get a treat. I live too far away from Kingston. Well, actually not too far away, but I definitely were making a road trip because I want to, I want to taste some of that wonderful food. So I just want you to um, uh, invite, I just want you to invite um, Janice and Lucy uh, to the virtual floor. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for the introduction, Eileen. Um, unfortunately, today, my business partner, Shanice, couldn't be here. So it's just going to be me for now. And I'm going to try to do my best. Um, so yes, like Eileen said, we're uh, a food service business in the Kingston area. Our name is Munchie Guru. Um, so just, I guess, a brief introduction. Um, we've actually been in Toronto for our whole lives, but moved to Kingston in 2019 because I got a job opportunity in the Kingston area, one that I've been wanting for a long time. Everything was going great and then the pandemic came and then in March of 2020, I actually got laid off. So that kind of setting a bit of a panic in me in terms of what to do for income and all that stuff. Um, and then prior to moving to Kingston and with COVID and all that, my business partner, Shanice, has always had a passion for cooking and she's always enjoyed it, but she's always just cooked for our personal friends, family friends and all that kind of stuff. But during the pandemic, we just thought we'd give it a try and actually like cook for people that are not within the family or not friends group and actually get feedback and see um, if they like it, if it's, if that's something we should continue. So that's how we made our Instagram page. Also to um, coming from Toronto, uh, I'm used to um, a variety of options when it comes to food, but um, the, the certain, I guess, restaurants or stores I would go to for food in Toronto, I, I didn't find them here. And one of the things that I found that wasn't here was there wasn't enough uh, Caribbean styled dishes within the Kingston area. So being that uh, my business partner is uh, of a Jamaican background, she decided to use her, her cooking skills and her background to the test. Um, and so that's how Munchie Guru was uh, formed and that's how we became cooking. Uh, we started the cooking business 
And it just started off by just uh, mm -hmm. making posts on Instagram and people just uh, messaging us privately about what they wanted from whatever options we offered. And we just started from there. And through that was how we actually met Carrie, who actually told us all about the weekend program, which we had never heard about before and realized that it was such a good and useful resource for us. And we were enrolled in a program in September uh, last year. And the program was very informative, very resourceful. We had lots of speakers who are also business owners and were going through a similar journey or have gone through a similar journey that we were going through. And they were able to share their experience with us. Um, we were given um, various business tools to analyze our business. We were told or were taught the importance of having a business plan, which again, I had no idea about it. I didn't really know the one-on-one -on -one about anything to do with business. I just thought, you have a product, you sell it, but there are so many moving parts that um, we can was able to show to us and teach us. And they've just been continued to show us support and provide us resources even after the program ended. And one of those resources again was uh, the coaching uh, program uh, with Eileen, which was offered to us, which again, um, I never thought that I would ever get a coach or have a coach or have the opportunity to have a coach. It's been a great experience because when I first came to Eileen, I had, I'd say 20 things I was trying to accomplish um, this year and everything was all over the place in regards to the business, but she was able to narrow down uh, the goals and accomplishment and keep me more focused in terms of what we're trying to accomplish um, for this year and everything has been going well so far um, that we do have partnerships with um, a local brewery in Kingston that we actually supply our patties to. So again, that was teaching the B2B side of businesses that I wasn't aware about, but now I'm becoming familiar with that. And also too, we just uh, launched our website um, last week, which is great because uh, we've just been taking orders manually through personal messages on Instagram, but now it's a lot more efficient, a lot more easier for people to make orders. And yes, and so I just want to thank We Can and Fusion and just all the resources that they've provided to us starting out because I'd say like we've grown leaps in such a short amount of time. We're, we're not even a year old yet. And I feel like the things we've been able to accomplish with Munchie Guru wouldn't have been possible if we didn't have all the community support and all the community help. So it's been a great experience so far and I'm just really grateful. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we do have an amazing uh, community. So I'm so happy to be part of that. Um, over to you, Elizabeth. Yes, uh, thank you, Aileen. Uh, before we go even uh, any further into the event, um, Kerry uh, Ramsey, our um, weekend project uh, manager, she's going to uh, take a group photo of us. So everyone put on your best smile and say cheese. <laughs> and okay. uh, Kerry, over to you. There's two screens of people. So I'm going to take two photos. So you don't know if you're on my first screen or my second screen. So you're just going to have to smile both times. So give me a moment. I'll let you guys get into position. <laughs> I better smile too. Hold on. All right. Oh. Let me get rid of the Zoom chat. OK. One, two. Oh, wait. I'm going to go this way. One, two. All right, and now screen two. Again, you don't know if you were on screen one or screen two, so here we are. Everyone who's got their cameras uh, hidden, I hope you were smiling too. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, I'll uh, probably be posting those on our uh, social media later, uh, and I will be dropping a link to those so you can find us as well. Back over to you, Elizabeth. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gary. Um, our next speaker is Abena Tufar Green. You heard her at the beginning of the event. Words are the powerhouse of expression for award-winning poet Abena Tufar Green of Tambourine Studio. Her storytelling and wellness workshops will help you with self-expression and communicating effectively with your team. Abena can also be commissioned to document events with her live poetry writing skills as she is doing for us right now. 
find out more as I pass the mic to Abena. Abena? You're on mute. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I am multitasking here. So I kept looking at the list like, I hope there's more people, but there are not. Alas, um, yeah, I am grateful to be part of this. And I am going to tell you a bit about Tambourine Studio. So Tambourine Studio, formerly Tambourine Boutique, uh, is a space that offers creative writing and movement for individuals and business owners who have a story to tell. Tambourine Studios helps individuals and businesses refine, refine, and share your stories. As well, we cultivate leisure and wellness through writing and dance-based activities. Now, I've always found myself most centered, joyful, and present when I write and when I dance. Growing up, however, I felt like I had to have a real job and that being an artist would have to take place on the side. I struggled with the idea that a large part of who I was at my core would have to be allocated to the side, but that's what I did. Still, I always made time to write and to dance. I began to engage with community through performances and workshops, and I noticed something special. People told me how much they related to my stories, people who I least expected to relate. They also began delving into their own, their creativity, imagination, as well as their hurts, their joys, their curiosities, and their messages they wanted to share with the world. Engaging with people, I learned two things. One, everyone wants a connection with themselves and with others. And two, Lots of people are looking for help bringing what's inside of them out and putting it into words. So in 2020, I began envisioning Tambourine Studio, a place that facilitated meaningful, that facilitated impactful storytelling and connection with self and others, family, community, colleagues, or clients. In recent years, I experienced something that millions of people deal with, anxiety. Knowing that dance and writing have always been my happy places, I decided to study recreation therapy as a way to meld my creative skills with formal therapeutic practices. At Tambourine, we marry craft, technique, culture, and therapy all through writing and dance. Programming on the storytelling side includes writing workshop, presentation coaching, creative copy for small businesses, and uh, as Elizabeth mentioned, I also do commissions and poetic summaries. On the wellness side, we offer journaling workshops and two movement classes, Affirmotion, a slower tempo expressive movement class, and Tabono, which is an upbeat traditional West African dance with easy to follow moves. Simply put, Tambourine Studio helps you find, refine, and share your stories. And it is my personal mission to create, engage, and elevate using storytelling and movement. Thank you. Thank you for that, Abena. Um, we are looking forward to your second poem at the end of the event. Check out Abena at her Instagram link, which you will find in the chat. And ending our speaker series right here with a big thank you to each of our speakers Kairu, Lorena, Namusa, Darcel, Lori, Michelle, and Lucy. They all came forward to inform us and educate us about their business, programs, products, and services. Well done. Now a few words about the Fusion Coaching Program that both Aileen and myself have been a part of for the past two months. Aileen? Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, I just wanted to say that I was thrilled to be invited to participate in Weekend. When I got the call from Carrie and we talked a little bit about it, I was really excited. And um, 
I was really thrilled to be part of what this project was going to be this year. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I was I was going to jump in with two feet. And, um, and I'm glad that I did because I had the opportunity to meet some wonderful women entrepreneurs that have either been in business a few years or are just starting out and just wanted some focus coaching. So I'm happy that that some of you that mentioned today did get that focus that you needed to you know move your business along. And so over the past couple of months, I've had the pleasure of seeing these leaders empower themselves and grow both themselves and their businesses. And I'm really looking forward to continue to watch them grow as we build some great connections together and we're branching out to see some other people. So thank you, uh, Weekend, for the invitation to being part of this program. Thank you, Aileen. And now it's my turn. It has been a real pleasure to be part of Weekend's uh, Fusion Coaching Program and witness the pivoting and launching of businesses by a remarkable group of women during these challenging times. The Fusion Coaching Program was created to be an inclusive space for diverse female entrepreneurs to come together and address their specific goals and overcome their unique challenges. This experience has opened up not only new possibilities, for business growth and expansion for our participants, but also the scope for personal development and leadership. The takeaways are the connections made and the feeling of belonging with a tribe that walks with you. I feel grateful to have been a part of this inspiring circle of women as their business coach. Thank you, Kerry, for inviting me to the Fusion Program and for your enthusiasm for keeping us going together for these past two months. On that note, I would like to make an honorable mention of a successful win at a pitch competition by Dr. Arba Mortley, owner of Cher Mere Day Spa in downtown Kingston, a local business that has pivoted during COVID-19 to online sales. Arba won the recent Rise Up Pitch Competition put on by the Black Business and Professional Association, Settlers Women Leaders, and the CASA Foundation. Congratulations, Abba. We are proud to have Abba as part of our weekend community. Many of you may remember her present as co-host at Fusion 2020 event last November. We're now excited to invite Abena back to our virtual floor to present her second poem. This poem has been written live during the course of the event, summarizing and highlighting the speaker's stories. As you listen to Abena's spoken word artistry, maybe you will be inspired to share with us a question or a thought. You're invited to type it in the chat and start a conversation while Abena takes center stage. Abena, the floor is yours. Oh, I just realized my mic is still on. Okay. Um, hi, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, I realized that I didn't add in my written pitch that Elizabeth was my coach. She was, and she was amazing in many different ways. Um, and actually, I just wonder if we can, you had mentioned people having questions or comments. Can I have like two more minutes to just do a final polish? If people Can people say things now and then come back to me in like three? Carrie's nodding. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna give uh, Abena a, a couple more minutes to finish up her poem. It is a feat of, uh, it, I don't know if I've seen it happen. You go up, you can go um, invisible if you want, Abena. It's up to you. I've seen her do this live. Um, I hired her for an event in 2019 in October. It was a leader lounge, a leadership uh, event for women. And, uh, it was an all day event. So she sat throughout the entire day and then wrote it at the end and presented it. But now she's had like only an hour and 15 minutes as opposed to all day. So uh, we will give her a couple of minutes. Um, are there any questions in the chat that you wanna post? And then I'm gonna, I'll toss it over to Elizabeth to manage this part, but I just wanted to mention, um, yeah, we'll just give her a couple of extra minutes. So um, I'm going to take on over here, Kerry. I see one question from Christina 
And she says, this is a very critical question. And I absolutely agree with Christina. How can we buy the patties? And did you mean uh, uh, the ones that Lucy was talking about, Christina? Yes, Manchi Guru, I think Darcel has asked the same question. So I, uh, if um, Lucy can come on and answer this very important question, I think we're all waiting to hear you from you, Lucy. It all comes down to food, sorry. <laughs> it does. I'm not sure if she's still on the call or is uh, on audio, but I did put the website for Manchi Guru. I think they just launched their website, uh, although they've had their Instagram account for quite some time. So I just dropped that link into the chat. I hope that's helpful. I believe you can purchase right through the website. Thank you, Kerry. Uh, we have, uh, so Renia writes, this has been an inspiring collection of stories, a good example of beyond silo thinking. So true. That is so necessary in this country right now. Yes. And I can only speak from my perspective here, but it has been an amazing experience. Recently, I had the opportunity uh, through We Can uh, to attend um, a presentation webinar, and I don't remember the name, but I'm so happy and glad that I did because I found out the amount of work that has happened to make this possible not only this event for us to be able to come together for the fusion coaching program for the your way the overcome program and a few more others immense amount of work has been done by fed of ontario women entrepreneurship strategy uh, ecosystem fund uh, by queens partnerships and innovation by the weekend project of which we are a part of and kerry is in charge it has been um it, it was a revelation and there was only gratitude in my heart because it felt that someone out there had this vision a collection of organizations, individuals heading those organizations, departments within those organizations, were thinking about us, about you and me to make this happen. So that gratitude is what I have felt, you know, being part of the Fusion Coaching Program, being part of Fusion 2020 event, and now Fusion 2021 event, that there are others thinking about us and we are part of not only the weekend project community, but of a much bigger community. And the support just makes my heart swell up. So thank you um, to all those out there who made this possible. And yes, yes, you know, it's out of silo thinking. It's the next one. So I'll jump in there, Elizabeth, uh, just to help you out a little bit. But we did have a question or a comment from Betty Ann. And uh, she said, it'd be great if we could create an online, if we can, not we can, we can create an online directory for all the great female-led businesses. Um, and Carrie has responded to say that uh, Betty Ann, it's in the works. And I'd also like to note that Ren Renia, I think I'm saying that correctly, please correct me if I'm not, uh, would like to share a few words about Hallowell Garden. So if you are ready, please go ahead and do so now. Yes, I'm ready. Thank you. Um, I have a cross-cultural education center in Picton, Prince Edward County. It's a historic house I bought uh, 20 years ago. And I've offered various kinds of language training, all Canadian context. And I'm very engaged in um, community initiatives such as the County Sustainability Group and uh, Transition PEC, both of which groups I, I started. So um, I'm really inspired to see that there are a lot of um, new things happening in this area, uh, which has historically, since I first moved here, been from the GTA um, after 26 years of working in newcomer settlement in Toronto. Um, that multiculturalism is starting to make an impact here. There's such a wonderful diversity of businesses, creative thinking, that sort of thing that's, that's really enriching this area. 
yeah, the, the cultural enrichment part of it is really extraordinary. So thank you for your work. Thank you, Renia. And um, it's it's always nice to come together in a group and, and share um, you know stories about your business, why you do what you do. It was very nice to hear about yours. Thank you, Renia. Uh, Betty Ann would like to share. So uh, Betty Ann, the virtual floor is yours. We invite you over. Okay, thank you very much. It is so delightful for me to be here. Thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing the recording with my team because we certainly have a, a, a multicultural diverse team. I'm a financial planner with a social conscience, which means that I and I'm a feminist activist from way back. Um, I'll be writing about that shortly because I was talking to a friend of mine about what's changed and what hasn't changed. And she and I were both in the violence against women movement like four decades ago. So it's, it's, I'm so excited about uh, the blog that we have coming up. Um, I grew up poor. My father couldn't read or write, which is why I'm passionate about financial literacy. So we've um, created a course called Dancing with the Money Dragon because we feel that people have... Um, tough relationships with money. And so we've created this course. I've uh, co-created it with Trevor Strong. If you've heard of the Arrogant Worms, he's the one who narrates it. He uh, goes to Queens. I went to Queens. And I also focus specifically on philanthropy. I work with a lot of charities. Um, I have a big heart. I live out in the country with my wife. We have horses. We have a dog big on supporting local businesses. So I would love to do everything and anything I can to support your businesses as well, because that's what it's all about for me. And my spouse is an accountant. <laughs> We're money people <laughs> with big hearts. Um, so yeah, I, I put my website up there. We're always creating resources. There's a guide there specifically. I call it my empowerment model for women because I'm tired of women being compared to men when it comes to financial planning and money. And I think women have all of these great um, traits that I think that we should be building on. I don't know if you've um, heard of the book Get a Different Voice with Carol Gilligan. And I, I've, like I said, I've been a feminist for decades. So all of that is incorporated in my business now. So I'm so happy that I, I um, have been listening to you all and it's, uh, I have goosebumps. So thank you all for sharing. Thank you so much, Betty Ann. I just loved your energy, especially when you mix feminism with money. Just love it. <laughs> uh, and, and, I, and I'm going to check out Making Dreams a Reality. Make note of that and go and check Betty Ann's link, uh, bettyannhoward.com. Um, and uh, yes, would anyone else like to share before we hear Abena? Okay. Don't be shy. If someone wants to take themselves off mute, you can go ahead. We'll we'll let you do that. I'm looking at a couple of you waiting for you. <laughs> I was just about to say the same. Don't be shy. We're all here to support one another. Okay. Right. Say it. There like we go. There we go. Boss. It's Is Chantal. It Chantal Fraser here. May I speak? Okay. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, Chantal. Go ahead. Okay. I just want to say that it's been a fabulous day. I've followed everybody on Instagram. I've liked your posts. I'm learning so much about women who are succeeding through the WeCan program and through the Fusion Coaching. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to learn about all these wonderful entrepreneurs. And that's all I wanted to share today. Thank you so much for sharing. That was wonderful. Okay, you guys have encouraged me to share too. <laughs> awesome. Welcome, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. So I live in Prince Edward County. I have uh, a food business. I'm also uh, very thankful for the weekend uh, program. It's For me, it's wonderful to see how many women are coming forward, losing their fears and putting themselves out there. 
because uh, it, it's very difficult, right? So like we all have, we have families, we have, so our partners work, you know, 40, 50 hours a week and you're the last one to go into bed. When you count on cow, housing kids, I'm putting 80. No wonder, where's the romance? Where is my life going? It, it's not because you're always trapped on everything that's gender kind of, uh, you know, a uh, woman is more nurturing. No, it's not true. I know many men that can do as much as I can, but our, that's how our society works. So come in a place like this and see so many women and see their business and go and, and be aware of them. You know, uh, it, it's just wonderful. It fills my heart with hope. I think if I can put it like a word, it's like hope. Like I'm not alone. Everyone has their own struggles, but we're all, we're here, we're together. And we're trying to succeed in such difficult times where it's like so difficult for everyone, right? So uh, for so that's it. I thank you so much. You know, I'm Brazilian. So, you know, and I've discovered there's more Brazilian around this area than actually I've ever anticipated. And it's nice to uh, know people's background. I'm a big fan of discovering things. So anyways, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for everyone. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank, thank you, you for Paula. sharing. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to kind of um, follow up after what you said, Paula, uh, about awareness and hope. What do you think, uh, Aileen? Because that is so true. You know, just the awareness that that we are all here and we are doing what we are doing, um, and and to be able to share that and have a platform to share, like we can, um, you know, and with each other. And and you know, there's always a strength in numbers. You know, when you know, yes, there are others doing stuff like me. There is the strength in numbers and hope that you know we can take this forward and go further. What are your thoughts, Ailey? Yeah, I echo that absolutely, especially moving from outside of the community. I've been here for about four years, but you know, working in Toronto and Markham and all those places, I only saw that end of the 401. So it's nice to actually see that there's a, a nice East End community that I was welcomed warmly into. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got some strategic partnerships that uh, that I'm just working with all the time. Yes, shout out to Chantal <laughs> Fraser. Um, it was just uh, wonderful to meet her right off the bat and talk about it and being welcomed into the community and awareness that we're out there. We are a powerhouse of women and we can empower each other and we can really rise up to the challenges that we foresee for ourselves. So that awareness that you're not alone, there's lots of other women out there doing mm -hmm. the same thing. How do we lift these ourselves up and how do we empower each other and make sure that we all get to the place that we want to go? So absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for that, uh, Eileen. Uh, up next is Ingrid. Ingrid? Hi, ladies. My name is Ingrid, and uh, I'm the founder of Girl Boss Chess. Yes, chess. Did you know that 90% of competitive chess players are men? Well, my goal is to narrow that gender gap. Uh, we are a global collective of women chess players. So we're all, we're from we're Italy, Brazil, uh, South Africa, um, Canada. Ireland, Argentina, and we're all elite chess players who have now joined together uh, with a mission to empower girls through chess uh, and women. So FYI, we do have chess for queens. Uh, all you adult ladies can take chess with us because I know that if you want to take chess, you have to go into a male dominated space, but that no longer exists because we are around. I think I'm living my most, uh, like my best life right now because I'm, in, I'm surrounded by women in my business and here and it's just like, I feel like I'm just like lifting up every day. I, I feel so happy to um, have this. I, I, I've been an entrepreneur all my life, but I never asked for help, never. 
So this is, yeah, right? So yeah. I, I've been a personal trainer, had my personal training studio. I've had a yoga studio. I've developed a baby line. Yes, I'm a like repeat uh, entrepreneur, uh, but I never asked for help. And this is the first time because I also have a partner who's a feminist. He uh, grew up with four older sisters. So he, his, his, and he jumped on board 100%. Uh, we, neither of us have jobs. It's girl boss chess. And he feels he's doing his best work too now by helping to empower me and as many women as possible. So uh, I just want to say thank you, ladies. Thank you, Carrie. You're awesome. Um, and we can project queens. Uh, and yeah, I'm just delighted to be here. <laughs> awesome Ingrid <laughs> Kerry <laughs> we need to respond to Ingrid <laughs> for that Love shout that out energy. and we are going to you know back her shout out to you too so yes yeah. it's a pleasure and I just I just made a note I don't I try to play chess with my son he's like actually really good and but isn't the queen the most powerful piece on the chess board is that not the truth she is the most powerful yeah. piece, uh, but it's interesting because when chess was first created, there was no woman on the chessboard. Wow, no yeah. kidding. Well, I yeah, love that she's the most powerful and I think that's, that's we should take a lesson right there. Yeah. <laughs> love it, love it. Perfect, not quite sure if Ben is ready yet. If not, is there anybody else that would like to share? Like, I mean, the momentum is going. I mean, we are moving right along and empowering each other. And the energy is really, really starting to show. So don't be shy. Come on out and let us see you and your business. And, you know, yeah, a bin out needs one more minute. So hey, Katrina, oh, Katrina look, has put that. her name in the chat. <laughs> yes, I see that now. Uh, and over to you, Katrina. Hi everyone, um, my name is Katrina and um, I am the co-founder of Kasama Marketing in Sterling, Ontario. And I just wanted to come on board and say congratulations, Eileen and uh, Elizabeth for this amazing opp uh, opportunity you've provided a lot of women. Um, and the pandemic last year for a lot of small businesses, particularly women, led businesses who are suffering. Um, but then there's a lot of courage coming forward and starting new businesses. And um, our business particularly has had the opportunity to witness that firsthand um, as a marketing agency. So I just wanted to just put that out there and be encouraged by all of you and all of your stories. Um, uh, and just seeing the diversity on screen is really empowering for me and all of your experiences thus far um, has been uh, enlightening and encouraging and empowering. So thank you for this. <laughs> thank you, Katrina. Um, and uh, I think um, we may be ready for Abena right now. Shout out to Abena. Um, are you ready, Abena? <laughs> She's been diligently working behind the scenes, capturing all of this information for her wonderful poem that I can't wait to hear. While she's doing that, so I'm going to buy you one more minute. And it's not just whole, and it's not just taking up space. I want to just jump in and thank Aileen and Elizabeth myself. And I know that they haven't been coaching me and I wish I could be a fly on the wall of that office that I see them both sitting in right now. They're in two different cities, but they're connecting women in a powerful way. Um, and to the point of Darcel and Ingrid and others who have mentioned this needing help, finding some kind of shame in that there. I mean, I think we've, whatever cultural reasons, social reasons, we we felt a shame associated with asking for help. Um, our time is now um, and we are with the We Can Project, obviously the, the goal is to level the playing field. I mean, we're nowhere near to 50% owned businesses uh, when it comes to the genders in Canada, it's far below 20%, in fact, if you do the, the math. And so what we're trying to do with this project and which Fed of Ontario also is uh, behind, of course, is to empower women, to engage women and equip women 
to move them forward at a ra as rapid a pace as we can without being ridiculous about it, of course, but to accelerate that growth because so many times a woman has an idea or anyone has an idea and then there's a barrier in front of her. And then it's like, oh, if only that barrier wasn't there, I would have a business. But the point of this entire We Can project is saying, you got a barrier, let's address it. Oh, there it goes. What's the next one? Because guess what? There's always going to be a new obstacle, right? But together in this, this forum and with the 20 plus programs that the We Can Project can offer to different groups of women, the idea is let us together move, remove the barriers. So if it's a if it's a legal question, we provide free legal services to We Can clients, they can meet with uh, the Queen's Business Law Clinic and get that answered so that that's out of the way. It's no longer a barrier or you know, maybe just a mindset question through coaching, et cetera. So the idea is by the end of your program, and by the way, you can move from program to program to program, which is awesome. Um, by the end of, let's say six months or a year, you are so much further ahead. And, and so I wanna thank Elizabeth and Aileen for playing such a pivotal role in that. Um, I could not have asked for two um, more brilliant, kind, incredible human beings to be those coaches and you've felt it if you're in their programs you know their their authenticity and their genuine dedication to your success um, for those of you in the fusion program even though today is uh, as elizabeth referred to it sort of a capstone event sort of a accumulation i guess uh, of the end of the fusion coaching program this is not the end for you um, in the ecosystem there is much more to discover so I just wanted to personally thank you both. Uh, it's absolutely incredible to be a part and to witness what I've witnessed from the outside of, of the coaching. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope that you'll spread the word. I think that, that that's my call to action today is that we don't stop with this event today. We get inspired to, to support the women that we've heard about, but then to spread the word because do we know other women who could use this um, in the greater Kingston, Quinty region is really the focus here. But uh, if, if they're outside that region, by the way, just connect them with me. I probably can find someone who can help. So anyways, I'll, I'll turn it over to back to Elizabeth because her, her face is on my screen right now. <laughs> and uh, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll check in with Avina and I can't wait to hear her poem. Thank you so much for that, Kerry. Um, and um, I can only say that um, this is such an immense opportunity for all of us uh, to take it, um, you know, and to be able to do whatever we can to move even further forward. And I think Aileen will agree with me here. Uh, I, I just read uh, Paula, what she put in the chat, and it is about her being a role model for her 10 year old daughter. And Paula, I agree with you so much because everything that I have been able to do and push myself to do is mostly because of my two teenage daughters, myself and my husband, we are both immigrants in Canada. And so not having that extended family here, just friends, it was very important to have role models in place, especially for a mixed couple like us, you know, that they would be able to move forward. And I can say it does make a difference. So carry on, you know, being that what you want to be for your sons and daughters, because it will make a difference down the road. I'm noticing that right now. Um, and I can say that uh, when I started 10 years ago, there was no weekend. My first business, uh, you know, adventure. <laughs> um, uh, and I had to reach out to organizations locally and beyond. But with weekend in place now, I mean, it is so much better. It is not just better because it's not just we can, but the access that we can has to this network of support in Ontario and beyond and brings us all the information, the resources, the tools. So make use of it, plenty use of it. And you know what? You want to know anything, anytime, there's always Carrie. She is my go-to person, her enthusiasm, her support, her energy. Uh, I mean, really is the driving force behind Weekend. So thank you, Carrie, for Absolutely. having me. Thanks so much. And Absolutely. I just saw No Musa. Did you see No Musa's note in the chat? She'd like to. Maybe. We did. Yeah. We'd like to invite her to speak as well. Namusa, the floor Hi. is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and thanks for those words, uh, Carrie. That was awesome. Uh, so today is my birthday. 
And my son has just surprised me by launching my website. So now you can sign up for the lessons. On Yay! My Happy and birthday. Thank you. I, I just you think we, message. we all come off of our, our, our mutes. We can we can sing happy birthday. What do you think? <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. yes. Sure. I, I, will yes. Lead, I will lead it and I make apologies, but no means it's for you. Okay. <laughs> Never no. been done before in a weekend event. I don't know if it's gonna work, but here we go. Three, two, one. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. It was just such a lovely surprise. It just came through during this meeting. Yeah, so thank you. Namusa, that is absolutely awesome. And I know how you were waiting with anticipation for your website to be launched. What a beautiful surprise. Mm -hmm. And sons or daughters, we are the role models to our children and we inspire them in so many ways than just only parenting, but also from our professional lives, our entrepreneurship. So Namusa, this is just awesome. What a great example. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Can't wait to check out the new website. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to check in with Abena once again and shout out to her. Abena, are you ready uh, now? Um, would you like no. us to spin another minute or? Oh, we're good. We're good. I don't want to keep people. <laughs> um, before I start, I just wanted to show my books that are available so if you're in the bookstore you can get them this was also part of my pitch <laughs> elizabeth is still working on me guys i'm not perfect yet but thankfully i have a couple more sessions so i'll be like way more polished <laughs> with my with my final hours with elizabeth elizabeth thank you so much um, for your patience and your everything your guidance your insight and without further ado i will turn to the words of the women. It doesn't have a title yet. It's just called Fusion Summary, Poetic Summary 2021. Okay. Karu Miller, tea sommelier, owner of Cha Cha Tea, provides luxury teas in the city of Kingston. Originally from Osaka, Japan, Karu loves Kingston, the parks, waterfront, downtown, but she has a problem, no tea shop. So Karu opened her own. Her daughters were young, two and a half and one. 14 years later, serving customers is still her joy. She can teach you how to make and how to sip your tea too. Karu suggests enhancing your life with a daily cup of cha-cha tea. Lorena from E&E &E Collections grew up in Mexico, attended missions with her Catholic school. Living with poor countries changed her, living with Poor communities changed her life's view of different opportunities, simplicity, beauty. In the hospitality for 20 years, Lorena's experience grew. She traveled and learned about gastronomy, arts, traditions, dialects. In 2015, love swooped her to Canada, leaving family, friends, food, and country. But her dream was to start a family. Life was good until it turned to gloom. With a cancer diagnosis. Unable to return to work, Lorena redirected. Though she expected to start a restaurant with coaching, she focused. E and E, named for her sons, offer customized face masks, jewelry, and decorations. Lorena will donate profits to the Cancer Association, who helped her survive her struggles. You will learn that your own story is your success, are the words Lorena says. Now, when Namusa waltzed into Kingston from South Africa, she stopped in her tracks. There were too few opportunities to further her competitive dance, an, an important part of life for her. At the height, and at the height of her career, Namusa knew she had to create a space here, a model where anyone can participate, including those with no partner a place where no prior experience is acquired, a place where instructors meet you where you are. Dansani embodies Ubuntu. I am 
because you are. Every one of us exists in community with each other. And Darcelle, in exploring her spirituality, became an ordained minister, then an officiant, then a wedding planner. She has a one-stop shop for special unions and departures, travel, destination, or local, heaven or earth. She enjoys the intimate moments of human life. It is an honor for her to support those dealing with grief. She can counsel and she can plan and she can restore belief every step of the way through the process. She knows it's not easy for people to ask for help, especially when they're leaders and seen to be strong. But infinity life weddings and travels, destination and unions are in caring hands. And Lori Hanna was disgusted when she learned that many ingredients in dog food were carcinogenic when her dog was diagnosed with cancer. She started doing research, switched her focus to learning what was good. What did dogs need to be healthy and happy? A 1986 magazine had a recipe for dog treats. Lori adapted it with local ingredients and provided her dog with homemade food. Next thing she knew, she was at farmer's markets on Saturdays, two-year-old in tow selling dog treats from a brown paper bag using skeleton mark park now using Skeleton Park Brewery upcycled grains, local meats and vegetable fruits. It's been 20 years and counting and Lori continues to evolve and improve. Now let's talk about Ruthie's Reading Room, a story time channel where kids can gain a love of books and reading. Every Wednesday at the library, Michelle and Maya listen to stories and Michelle began to think. As a child protective worker, she would see children in their homes, many whose parents weren't there, many whose parents didn't have time for education or literacy, or maybe they didn't care. How could she bring story time to these children? YouTube would do, Michelle realized. Educational and entertaining, highlighting and representation, Ruthie's Reading Room was born and delivers offering a safe option for screen time. Catch her on Amherst Island Radio Saturday mornings for the audio. Now, Lucy and Shanice, their name is Munchi Guru, Toronto bred, Kingston planted. Everything was great until the pandemic when Lucy was laid off. From Toronto, the two were used to a variety of food. They were missing that in Kingston, not enough Caribbean style dishes. Now, Shanice had those Caribbean roots and had always been passionate about cooking. Why don't I cook for the people during the pandemic? So Shanice and Lucy put their skills to the test. One post on Instagram, a few DMs, and it started rolling. There they met Carrie, who told them about WeCan. They gained tools and learned about business plans, past just selling a product. They were not, they're not even a year old yet, but the business is such a success. And all of us give compliments to WeCan and the coaches for the laughter, for access to funding and loans, for direction we didn't know we needed, for helping us see our values shape our business, for guiding us in understanding the client experience. We've changed our names and learned to ask for help. We've invented and promoted and in turn offered support. Thank you for teaching us how to pivot for helping us to focus, for making sure we're moving forward in the right way. This has been an opportunity to grow and expand. So from all of us, we say, thank you, we can. I don't know how you do it, Abin. <laughs> so amazing. But the depth of your... Um, retention of of what transpired through the event and, and the capturing of that the emotion the metaphors and everything that you presented connected just so powerfully and deeply with me um i i, I want to be able to read that poem again so if you can share it with us in any way i would just love that because it just echoes so many sentiments that we feel on a daily basis and, and you've just captured it so thank you so much it was brilliant thank you and I now just want to say, um uh you i think uh, yeah i will send it to carrie so everyone here got like that sneak peek first glance and then i will tighten it up and send it to carrie so you'll see like a polished and even better version thank you abena aileen that was wonderful. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. 
So we are coming to the end of our show. Just before I wrap up, is there, is there any questions very quickly, if you want to put it into the chat for any of our presenters this morning? Okay, well, seeing none, I would just like to wrap this up a little bit um, and to say that I want to give many thanks to Carrie, the project manager at Queen's University Weekend Project for organizing this event and for her guidance and support for the Fusion program. Um, it's just been wonderful, and I appreciate working with um, Elizabeth. It's been amazing working with her, and thank her for collaborating through the program and co-hosting with me today. I'll turn it over to Elizabeth now to say a few more words. Thank you, Aileen. I just want to wrap it up with saying again, a big thank you to Abena for celebrating our event with her spoken word artistry and to each of our speakers for sharing their business stories. Thank you for being part of Fusion. We wish you success into 2021 and beyond. Many thanks to Kerry Ramsey, project manager at Queen's University's Weekend Project. You are pivotal to the success of We Can and to our success. So thank you so much. For, and also thank you for organizing this event. I know we just threw it out there and you grabbed it and you made it this big. Thank you for your guidance too and your support. Ailey, it has been amazing working with you and collaborating with you, not only through the Fusion Coaching Program, but even for this event. All those behind um, the scene texts and emails <laughs> and so on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to stay in touch. <laughs> Absolutely. Before closing, my heartfelt thanks goes out to you, our amazing audience, for being part of this inclusive space and for showing your support for the Fusion program. Your presence makes We Can possible. So thank you again. And have a lovely afternoon. Namaste. Great.